Hi guys, Android Andy here again. So, here's my Galaxy S4 as you can see. I'm going to show you today another ROM that I've been trying over the last few days. Uh, this time it's CyanogenMod, as you can see from the, uh, the boot up. Um, CyanogenMod 10.1, it's one of the first nightlies I think that there's been. So I put it on expecting it to be quite buggy. Um, and to be honest, I was quite surprised, pleasantly surprised. Um, I've been using it for probably th maybe even almost a week now, I suppose. Um, and generally, I would say, yeah, it is pretty usable. There are a few bugs, which I'll come to shortly, but generally, um, it's quite fast, slick, no real issues with it. So, why would you use Sinogen Mod, you perhaps ask? Quite often, you find that, uh, especially on Samsung devices, a ROM that's built purely off Google's source codes, uh, it will be very buggy, uh, things won't work properly at all. Um, but with the release of the Google Edition ROM, which I did a review of uh, a week or so back, you will notice that actually things things work quite well without the, the Samsung uh, aspects of the ROM. You do find, I find the Google Edition one a bit uh, bare, I suppose, a bit there wasn't much to it, so that's why I thought I'd give the Cyanogen Mod a go, because it's still based on an AOSP, still based on sort of the the stock uh, aspects of Google, but it's got lots and lots of tweaks, lots and lots of additions. Um, if you've seen Cyanogen Mod before, there won't be a great deal new for you to see, to be honest. Um, actually, I'll show you this. If I swipe down on the left side, and you can change which side this works, you get the control panel. And if I swipe down on the right side, I get my notification bar. I've still got quick toggles at the top, which again, I can change myself. I can also tap that to swap back and forth between the two. If I go into settings, I'll show you a few of the things that are Cyanogen Mod based. Um, and it's this bit here, really, this personalization bit. Well, if I tap on home screen, it's just going to take me to Nova settings. I'm not going to bother doing that. Lock screen, so you can change all your variety of lock screen options there. Um, again, I should just show you real quick. This is based off for Android version 4.3. There's the kernel and base bands if that's important to anybody. Um, I should point out this is where you can turn on developer mode. Let me think. Build number. You tap this. No need, you are already a developer. See what it says there. So I previously on, on other ROMs you go in and you kind of select developer mode somewhere and I couldn't find out where it was. I had to Google and stuff like you, you tap the build number a few times and it turns on developer mode basically, which then lets you get to all the different things like developer options, because you probably want you probably want the advanced reboot where it gives you all the different options, you probably want USD debugging on as well, especially if you use uh, titanium backup. So let's come back up. Where was I? There we go. So lock screen, all the options. You get options for themes. Now I've only got the one, I think. Oh, that's to apply, that's to get information. Uh, I think more will come in time there. Interface is probably the, the best place for filling about with. So you can change options to your status bar. You can turn the clock on and off. You can change the battery to be whichever style you prefer. I find that a little bit small when it's the number and the circle. So I stick with, or you can hide it totally if you're really not bothered. I'd be surprised, but so I stick with a, just a percentage. Signal status is quite interesting. You can have an actual uh, signal strength showing rather than the funny bars, or you can remove it totally. I'm on Wi-Fi, so it's, I suppose it's going to be there anyway. Well, that's what I know. Um, and show notification cards. So if you get an email, Obviously the icon appears in the notification bar. With notification count on, if you get more emails, it'll, say like, it'll have the email icon and a little five over it. Um, notification draw, so this is the bit that I was talking about. Auto close behavior, close after remove and last remove one notification. Close if none, home disable. So you can, you've got some options there. Power widget, as those bits along the top. Widget buttons, you get to select from a whole load of them if you want. Um, and I believe if I put some extra ones in, are they all? Yeah, you, you can scroll back and well, side to side, I should say, sorry, to be able to see them. Now, which did I put on? I don't want that, and I don't want that. Um, right, 
brightness modes. Oh, so that's if you have brightness as one of the options that you can select which which it rotates through. Same with the sound modes, which it rotates through. Flash mode, no, well, that's for the that's for the uh, torch, which is very very handy, I think. Um, what else? Hide scroll bar, close drawer, and change haptic feedback. I've got to be honest, I haven't. I'm not sure where the expand desktop is. I've not used it. Let us know in the in the comments if you know what it's for or how you use it. Um, you also get profiles in Synergy Mod, which you can play about with, changing if it automatically turns things on and off, um, volume overrides. So they're kind of handy. Oh, and I believe let's have a look. So you, I can have it switched to home on connect to that. Where's on oh, connect to that? It will switch automatically to home. Um, work. Uh, yeah, I haven't particularly got any triggers for work. It doesn't let you do location based at this point. And with an NFC tag, switched obviously. So those are profiles. Those can be accessed. You probably notice, noticed from the the command center type thing. Um, you get options for meddling with performance. I haven't really gone into those a great deal to be honest. But you can see the current CPU frequency lock at the top there. You can change the maximum. We can lower it perhaps if you want to underclock a bit for battery life. And click set, set on boot. Now, battery life is probably one of the biggest reasons I'm thinking of going back to a, a Samsung based ROM. Unfortunately, I found that it doesn't, it still has good battery life, but the Samsung ROMs have pretty fantastic battery life, and this doesn't have as fantastic. So uh, I was out and about on Saturday, I was taking a lot of photos granted and it obviously I have the auto backing up and that is when I, when I find its most intensive uh, use of the battery. When I'm doing that kind of thing I was in a lot of areas where there was poor signal as well so it was trying to back up on like terrible connections but uh, by sort of two o'clock I had to start turning my phone off in between journeys because I was just going to run out of juice um, and I don't believe it would have been, would have been quite that drastic if uh, if I'd been using a Samsung ROM. So, what else? I think that's uh, I think that's mainly it. I may have forgotten something. What I would say, make sure that your uh, recovery is at least Clockwork Mod 6.0.3.6 because I I had it um, I had it low. I had an earlier version that and it wouldn't flash. It was giving me errors. You do need to bear in mind you need to download the Google app separately as well and flash them after you flash Synergy Mod. Um, and oh, yeah, the other thing I was going to show you is the Focal app. So this is Focal. It's the uh, it's the camera app that's kind of built into Synergy Mod. I like it because it's very sort of. I mean, that looks very clean. Basically, and there's not much, just the one little button, and you're thinking, okay, well, how do I get to any options? Now, either you hold down on that and you kind of cycle away to, to something else, and that's kind of a cool version of the Photosphere. Oh, that's where's that sky come from? The sky superimposed, because I can guarantee you this. Yeah, so that's the image you see, and that's kind of the false horizon. Um, let's go back to normal camera and then to get to the settings and options and things we just swipe in from the side look and then you can obviously change change flash you can have it permanently on torch style which I know is obviously quite handy with like videoing uh, scene mode so you can go to HDR night all that kind of thing or we have to tap to close oh I like that actually so it brings them in in a series but yeah you get to infinite ching 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 type thing so I think that's very cool oh I see I've never realized that actually so they stay there that's quite that's quite clever actually I think do you know I don't need that I don't really need I suppose 
flash is quite handy to keep power at times. So, and then obviously to take a picture, I don't know why the flash, flash seems to be, and you can tap to focus. Picture, and off it goes. Um, I'm not sure, yeah, so I can slide down and there are, <laughs> there's time to sleep, can I go in? The bro, come on. That's quite a, I couldn't, I'm not sure. <laughs> I can seem to be able to swipe in all different angles to. And then I can go to regular calorie. And it's all back to back to normal. Um, yeah, Silverstone yesterday. So there we go. So that's the focal app. Quite the, the normal camera app is still on there, I believe. Uh, yeah, so that's the normal camera app, and I wish I knew my alphabet focal. Focal is just that. So the normal camera app being one you will recognise from 4.3. Um, there you go. I don't think there's anything else particularly that you need to see. So the books that I found, the camera app wouldn't always open. Uh, sometimes it, it would, well, sometimes it would take sort of 10 seconds and then finally it would open. Sometimes it felt like it like it crashed, perhaps you get the black screen and you got the little button at the bottom out of the way and I'd hit back and it'd come back out and I'd try and up the normal app and it would say, um, cannot connect to camera. It didn't happen very often, I reboot it, it would be fine definitely and sometimes I'd come back and it would say that error and then I'd open focal again and it would open up. And as you saw just now, it opened fine just then. Oh, maybe not a lot. Yeah, uh, yeah, so this is exactly what it has done at times. There you go. So it's not it's not horrendous. It's not good if you're in a hurry to take a picture, obviously. But uh, but it's not too bad. Uh, okay, so I think that's everything. So that's Silent Mod 10.1 from one of the nightlies of about a week ago. Uh, I think, I can't think of anything else. If you've got any questions, drop them below, but I am unfortunately probably going to flash a different ROM now. A bit of a ROM addict myself, so uh, I won't necessarily be able to try things, but give it a go. Make sure, oh, please make sure you back things up. Whenever you flash a new ROM, make sure you do an Android, because things can go wrong. You want to be able to, you want to know that you can, you can pop back into a safe working ROM, basically. There we go. I'll uh, catch you all again soon. My name's Andy.